Defecation Defecation reflex Feces are eliminated by the defecation reflex. When mass movements of the colon move feces into the rectum, the resultant distension of the rectum stimulates stretch receptors in the rectal wall, initiating the defecation reflex. This reflex causes the internal anal sphincter, which is smooth muscle, to relax and the rectum and sigmoid colon to contract more vigorously. If the external anal sphincter, which is skeletal muscle, is also relaxed, defecation occurs. Being skeletal muscle, the external anal sphincter is under voluntary control. The initial distension of the rectal wall is accompanied by the conscious urge to defecate. If circumstances are unfavorable for defecation, voluntary tightening of the external anal sphincter can prevent defecation despite the defecation reflex. If defecation is delayed, the distended rectal wall gradually relaxes and the urge to defecate subsides until the next mass movement propels more feces into the rectum, once again distending the rectum and triggering the defecation reflex. During periods of inactivity, both anal sphincters remain contracted to ensure fecal continence. When defecation does occur, it's usually assisted by voluntary straining movements that involve simultaneous contractions of the abdominal muscles and a forcible expiration against the closed glottis. This maneuver greatly increases intra-abdominal pressure, which helps expel the feces. Constipation. If defecation is delayed too long, constipation may result. Constipation occurs when the feces become too dry. When colonic contents are retained for longer periods of time than normal, more than the usual amount of water is absorbed from the feces so they become hard and dry. Normal variations in frequency of defecation among individuals range from after every meal to up to once a week. When the frequency is delayed beyond what is normal for a particular person, constipation and its attendant symptoms may occur. These symptoms include abdominal discomfort, dull headache, loss of appetite, sometimes accompanied by nausea, and mental depression. Contrary to popular belief, these symptoms are not caused by toxins absorbed from the retained fecal material. Although bacterial metabolism produces some potentially toxic substances in the colon, these substances normally pass through the portal system and are removed by the liver before they can reach the systemic circulation. The symptoms associated with constipation are caused by a prolonged distension of the large intestine, particularly the rectum. The symptoms promptly disappear after relief from distension. Possible causes for delayed defecation that might lead to constipation include Ignoring the urge to defecate Decreased colon motility accompanying aging, emotion, or a low-bulk diet Obstruction of fecal movement in the large bowel caused by a large tumor or colonic spasm and impairment of the defecation reflex. If hardened, fecal material becomes lodged in the appendix. It may obstruct normal circulation and mucus secretion in this narrow, blind-ended appendage. This blockage leads to appendicitis. The inflamed appendix often becomes swollen and filled with pus, and the tissue may die as a result of local circulatory interference. If not surgically removed, the disease appendix may rupture, spewing its infectious contents into the abdominal cavity. Feces Fecal material normally consists of 100 grams of water and 50 grams of solid, including undigested cellulose, bilirubin, bacteria, and small amounts of salt. Thus, contrary to popular thinking, the digestive tract is not a major excretory passageway for eliminating waste from the body. The main waste product excreted in the feces is bilirubin. The other fecal constituents are unabsorbed food residues and bacteria, which were never actually a part of the body. Bacteria account for nearly one-third the dry weight of feces. Intestinal gases are absorbed or expelled. Occasionally, instead of feces passing from the anus, intestinal gas, or flatus, passes out. This gas is derived primarily from two sources. Swallowed air, as much as 500 milliliter of air may be swallowed during a meal, and gas produced by bacterial fermentation in the colon. The presence of gas percolating through the luminal contents gives rise to gurgling sounds known as borborygmi. Eructation, burping, removes most of the swallowed air from the stomach but some passes on into the intestine. 
Usually, very little gas is present in the small intestine because the gas is either quickly absorbed or passes on into the colon. Most gas in the colon is the result of bacterial activity, with the quantity and nature of the gas depending on the type of food eaten and the characteristics of the colonic bacteria. Some foods, such as beans, contain types of carbohydrates that humans cannot digest, but that can be attacked by gas-producing bacteria. Much of the gas is absorbed through the intestinal mucosa. The rest is expelled through the anus. To selectively expel gas when feces are also present in the rectum, the person voluntarily contracts the abdominal muscles and external anal sphincter at the same time. When abdominal contraction raises the pressure against the contracted anal sphincter sufficiently, the pressure gradient forces air out at a high velocity through a slit-like anal opening that is too narrow for solid feces to escape through. This passage of air at high velocity causes the edges of the anal opening to vibrate, giving rise to the characteristic low-pitched sound accompanying passage of gas.